Homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to look at Samuel the Lamanite and see how many times that comes up in General Conference. The reason why is because, like many of you, uh, the thing that kind of woke us up to the possibility of the Second Coming being sooner than we thought was Jody Stoddard's uh, series of videos. And in it, she mentions Samuel the Lamanite um, when Elder Bednar, he was talking about it in the 2015 Christmas devotional. And I actually want to read part of this, uh, in fact, most of it. But <clears throat> that kind of got that idea in my mind about Samuel the Lamanite. And <clears throat> why is that important? Well, it's because Samuel the Lamanite, for the Lord's first coming, told the Nephites when he was going to come. He gave a prophecy about uh, what signs would occur uh, with his birth and with his death and resurrection and to look for those signs. Okay, and so the the idea is maybe, just maybe, if they're talking about Samuel the Lamanite now, maybe they're trying to give us hints as to the fact that, well, maybe Christ is a lot closer than we think. And maybe he's already been here for the first parts or the first sessions of Adam on Diamond. I say that just because <clears throat> there was a, a rumor passed on me from a friend of a guy that claimed to have gone to the first uh, like session or two of Adam on Diamond. I don't mean to perpetuate this rumor, but the idea was that it happened in 2021. Uh, I'm not going to say at all that that happened. I'm taking it with a grain of salt. But I'm going to entertain the idea because even if he's wrong, you know, we look at the year 2020, we look at that April conference, and it was a very special conference. And I think it could have been more than just the 200 year commemoration of the first vision. Uh, we did a Hosanna shout, uh, which has been done other times other other than temple dedications. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's within the realm of possibility. Maybe. So we're going to also look at the year 2021. You know, could it be that we did the Hosanna Shout, had that special conference, and then maybe the next year, the first session of multiple sessions of Adam Amin, which may still be ongoing, uh, could have happened in that year. So before I do that, I want to highlight some photos sent in to me by Sarah Nick. She served a mission. And if any of you guys have mission photos that you'd like to have featured in the videos, please send them in. Send them to my email. It's my.christian.homestead at gmail.com. Uh, I think it's fun. I like to see the mission photos. I also like to encourage anybody that's thinking about going on a mission. Uh, maybe this can be a little, just a little bit more encouragement. Okay, so this is what she said in the email. Hi, Jared. I like your idea of sharing mission photos. Uh, you may pick one of this selection. Excuse me for my German-like English. Uh, well, that's okay. Uh, I'm actually just going to show them all. So <clears throat> we don't have to limit it to just one. But with other people, they've sent in multiple. So uh, it was fun to remember my mission on Temple Square, Salt Lake City, around the millennial change. Now, let me say, I always loved going to Temple Square and always just having the knowledge that there would be missionaries there. Uh, sometimes, like, I, I just wanted a spiritual, um, to be spiritually uplifted. Uh, after my mission, I went to Temple Square and I looked for any sister missionaries that uh, were from Spain so I could practice my Spanish and just remember my mission because uh, I loved Spain. So I, I really like the Temple Square mission. So I'm glad that you were able to serve there. I'm sure it was a good time. All right, she continues, I already shared some memorable experiences from then with you, like the dedication of the conference center by President Hinckley and all the preparations going on for the Olympics. Uh, so at that point, I was in high school. Um, okay, and she was on her mission. Uh, I, was, I was for three months up in Park City to get started, the Family Tree Center. Uh, for this, I went back again to the MTC for a special training on family search. I was lucky to have have had several uh, interactions with general authorities 
and <clears throat> from the mission department to serve with. Being from Little Switzerland, Little Switzerland? Oh, are you just talking about the size of the game? It's like, it's a little. Um, I had, when I was in Arizona, we had a sister there that was serving her mission, and she was in my, my ward. She uh, was from France, but she had dual citizenship in Switzerland, and she, she lived in France, but she would go and work in Switzerland and spend a lot of her time there, so... Um, I would like to visit Switzerland someday. Anyway, being from Little Switzerland, I it was a privilege to serve at the headquarters of the church and to experience this worldwide membership with missionaries from all over the world. I'm so grateful to have had this mission experience as the first in my family and among my relations. Now my life mission consists of rearing five children with my husband, hoping to prepare and excite them to serve in the Lord's great work. Uh, wherever they are, to strengthen each other and to get ready for, to to get ready to eventually meet Christ on this earth. Um, thank you for your valuable service to share gospel knowledge and other important truths. Uh, greetings from Bern, also to your family, Sarah Nick. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sending the photos and sharing your mission experience with us. I'm sure that serving at the Temple Square mission is pretty fun. So, all right, so let's move on. Let's look at the tracker and let's see how many how many talks Samuel the Lamanite shows up in throughout the year, starting in 1942. Oops, I need to, I messed that up. I was using the arrow keys and it, okay, I'll start right there. Okay. Okay, only two times in the 40s, uh, in the 50s, we got five times. Okay, so two times and then five times in the 60s. In the 60s, we have seven times. All right, let's look at the 70s. 70s, only four times. Okay, 80s. 80s, six times. So not seven, but six. All right, let's look at the 90s. The 90, the 90s only two times, <clears throat> so that really quiets down right there. Okay, the 2000s, only one time. Only one time in the 2000s. All right, now let's look at the 2010s. And the 2010s, it takes the lead with eight times. Eight times in the 2010s, and that's after two really quiet decades of um, the 2000s and the 19 in the 90s. Okay, and then already in this decade, we're already at three, but all three of those times was in 2021. So that's interesting. So let me let me zoom out. Okay, so you can see that it, he's somewhat frequent, more so back in like the, I don't know, the, the late 40s, 50s a little bit, the 60s, and then kind of like in the 80s. But things get quiet for quite a while, and then suddenly they start bringing him up uh, quite a bit starting in 2010. Uh, with a spike. The most times that he's ever been mentioned was in 2021. So you have to kind of wonder, don't you? Uh, why why is there an uptick in talking about Samuel the Lamanite? Well, I, I tend to think like with so many other terms and words that we've looked up, uh, it, it's because the second coming is coming up upon us really soon. So I'm going to reveal the other um, the other columns, I'm going to unhide them. And I, I put together the ones that, where there's like spiking in 2021. Okay. I'm just going to entertain the idea that maybe whether it was Adam on Diamon, like the first or first couple sessions or some other thing that maybe we don't know about. It seems like maybe something happened in 2021. Look at this row right here. 
So the second row from the top. And you'll notice how it, you know, there's a dark line in, in 2021 when you compare it to the rest of these other rows. Okay, so what are the phrases? Well, I wanted to know, I've already done a video about this, but there was someone that had brought up that, um, you know, that Dieter Uchtdorf said, God is among us, and he repeated it twice in like two different talks. And one of his talks was actually titled, God is among us. And so I wanted to see if there was more like resurrection talk than usual. And there, yeah, there kind of is, or at least there's like a spike. Um, so we have that he lives with five times in 2021, tomb with four times, um, Christ lives with five times. Uh, with that, you have to go back to 2009 to see five times, and then it doesn't even happen ever again. The only time that it happens five times is in 2009 and <clears throat> 2021. And notice the years surrounding it. You know, it, it's um, it kind it kind of quiets down a little bit, and then it just it spikes right there in 2021. He is risen. We have two times in 2021. You have to go all the way back to 1985 to see that kind of number again. So this one is a little bit more, it's more frequent, but then it, it quiets down. Look at all the white space and all the light pink right here, starting in 1986. And then it gets really quiet, and then all of a sudden, boom, in 2021, two times, just like out of nowhere. Okay, comes again. We have four times in 2021. And it's not really important that you like see the years here. If you, if you want to look at this closer, I have a link for, for this spreadsheet in the description of every video. So you click on the link. It brings you here to my Google Drive. You can't change anything, but you can look at everything that I have on this spreadsheet. So comes again. Uh, here to make it easier i'll have it be i'll be i'll have it be the far left corner so it comes again there's a whole bunch of white space down here 40s 50s 60s kind of picks up in the 70s which is common for second coming terms there's a spiking that happens in the 70s then it quiets down again a lot of white space and then it picks up um starting in 2008 but especially in 2016 and it spikes in 2021 uh look what else temple recommend oh that's not what i wanted to click on okay temple recommend temple recommend spikes in 2021 with six uh let's go back in time just a ton of white space between the 40s to the uh, to 1970. After that, a lot of pink. 1990s, it picks up in 1994, and we kind of stay in the medium red since that time. But then there's a spike. The most times Temple Recommend has ever been said in General Conference was in 2021 with six. Um, and then we have <clears throat> never been more important, imperative, um, etc. The spike is in 2021 with four. It kind of kicks off in 2019 with one time and then two times in 2020, four times in 2021, and then already three times for 2022. So that's kind of interesting. But when you go back in time, uh, you don't see anything else like that. There's just a bunch of white space and light pink. So there's a definite cluster right here. And as of right now, we won't know until October of this year, and I update 2022. But as of right now, the spike is uh, in 2021 with four times. Look at look at millennium. <clears throat> look at this dramatic silence right here. It was it wasn't even that word wasn't even used during all of President Monson's presidency at all. And then suddenly we're using it two times in 2020, three times in 2021, and then once so far in 2022. You go back in time. Now, this one's different because uh, there's a cluster here, 
around the turn of the millennium, which makes sense. They were probably really thinking about that uh, in the 90s, and here's the proof. Uh, before that, it kind of gets quiet, and uh, there's not really that high a frequency in the 70s. I guess there kind of is, but anyway, you can see that uh, somewhat in the 70s, uh, and maybe the 60s, it quiets down, and then in the late 90s, it, it spikes up, and then after that, it's just very, very quiet, and then all of a sudden, bam, starting in 2020 with a with a little spike in 2021. Um, and then I'm not going to go through these too much, but you see your spiritual, your foundation, spiritual foundation, same thing. It's just 2021 seems to have been a, a bigger year for those terms. So I find that interesting. I find that interesting. Again, if if Adam and if the first part of it or something related to it or even some other completely different event that maybe we're not privy to happened, maybe that could account for some of this. Maybe. Just maybe. I don't know. Now, uh, let's look at first... Um, well, let's go ahead and just let's look at uh, Elder Bednar's talk. It's called The Light in the Life of the World. Again, this was in 2015 for the Christmas devotional. And let me just go ahead and read it. The restoration of the gospel in the latter days. Okay, now let me just give you uh, what I think is going on here. He's about to tell the story of Samuel the Lamanite, and it takes up most of the talk, and he wants us to put ourselves uh, in the shoes of somebody that's 10 years old. I think I think 10 years old, maybe 15, I can't, we'll see. Uh, at the time that Samuel the, Samuel the Lamanite says that there's five more years before Christ is born, okay? And at the beginning of the talk, he calls you know, he calls attention to the fact that we're in the latter days, okay? The restoration of the gospel in the latter days provides an important companion account of the Savior's birth in the Book of Mormon. My message highlights this additional description of the first Christmas. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we consider this episode together, brothers and sisters, I invite you to visualize yourselves in these events and not merely listen to the words. I pray the Holy Ghost will help you liken these scriptures to you and your family and fill your hearts with the true spirit of Christmas. Uh, could it be that because the reason why is because he wants us to kind of realize, hey, we're basically in the same situation. You know, now in our case, no one's going to be like, OK, he's coming in five years. He's coming in 10 years because that's not the nature of the second coming. But we learn from Joseph Smith that the prophet can know when he's going to come. Uh, it's been emphasized a couple times in conference that the Lord will do nothing until he reveals his secret to the prophets, <clears throat> his servants, the prophets. Sorry. <clears throat> Gosh, what's going on with me? Um, so... Uh, and even so, e even if you like take that out of account, if you just think about it, if they do know when the Adam and Ayaman is going to happen, because uh, I'm not I'm not aware that we can't know the day or the hour when Adam and Ayaman is going to happen, because I think that the no man knows the day or the hour, I think that probably applies mostly to the official second coming or maybe the second coming to the Jews. I'm not sure. But anyway, just take those things into consideration, okay? I think what Elder Bernard is saying here is, look, we, this generation of people right now, we're the ones that would match up with this story in the Book of Mormon. He's trying to, I think he's trying to give us hints. So, okay. Samuel the Lamanite. <clears throat> Our account begins in the land of Zarahemla a few years before the birth of the Savior. Samuel the Lamanite came among the people to preach repentance and prophesy of Christ. Now, please try to imagine that you are 10 years old and a member of the multitude listening to a prophet of God foretell future events. Samuel declared, 
quote, Behold, I give unto you a sign, for five, year, five years more cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who, who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign at the time of his coming. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh, there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was day. Therefore, <clears throat> there, be, there shall be one day and a night and a day, as if it were one day, and there, and there were no night. And this shall be unto you for a sign. And behold, there shall a new star arise, and this also shall be a sign unto you. <clears throat> the Savior's birth. As time passed, quote, the prophecies of the prophets began to be fulfilled more fully, uh, for there began to be greater signs and greater miracles wrought among the people. Now, think about this. He gave this in 2015, right? And Samuel the Lamanite prophesied five years before Christ came. And now we're talking about a point here where uh, the time is approaching and the signs become greater and more incredible. And if you look at the world since 2015, exactly five years later, there's all these crazy things going on. Well, even... No, not even five years late. If you look at 2017 with the Revelation 12 sign um, in the constellation Virgo, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. <clears throat> if you look at the 2017 eclipse, uh, if you look at everything that's happened in, well, with Trump moving the embassy to Jerusalem in 2018, uh, you look at the coronavirus, you look at all the riots and the uh, things that were going on in 2020 and everything that's been going on since that time, war with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and then all, during all these different years, you have things like the Paradise, California fire. And then not only that, but just really incredible fires happening uh, in California and the entire Western United States, a mega drought. Water levels right now are really, really low. I did a video about that just like a week or two ago. Uh, earthquakes. This year we had the largest volcano eruption ever recorded. Uh, in, in fact, it was the largest explosion, uh, including uh, nuclear and hydrogen bombs, the largest explosion ever recorded uh, in Tonga with that underwater volcano. So uh, it, there's been a lot since, since 2015. And as we approach 2020, uh, if you're looking at that timeline, uh, up until now even, it's just increased. It's become more and more and more. The signs have become greater and greater. Okay. So I, I think that this, this talk right here is kind of prophetic, having been given in 2015. Okay, so continuing. Please now imagine five years have passed and you are now approximately 15 years old. You can, you can recall clearly the prophecies of Samuel as you consider the present circumstances in which you live. Quote, But there were some who began to say that the time was past for the words to be fulfilled, which were spoken by Samuel the Lamanite. And they began to rejoice over their brethren, saying, Sorry, there's the daily siren in my town there we have the t tornado siren it's tested every day at 12 at noon that's when i'm recording this uh and they began to rejoice over their brethren saying behold the time is past and the words of samuel are not fulfilled therefore your joy in your faith concerning this thing hath been in vain and um i, I don't know if you feel like there's been that kind of attitude uh i haven't necessarily seen that in the world like anyone saying oh look the second coming hasn't happened uh although i will say in the church it feels like there's people that don't want it to happen or uh try and explain how it's not going to happen during their lifetime uh it feels like there's people that are not looking forward to it or it's like oh no so i, I don't know 
put in the comments if you've have any have if you've had any experiences where people say, "Oh no, it's not going to happen." You you Christians or you Latter Day Saints, you're crazy thinking that there's going to be a second coming. Okay, and it came to pass that they did make a great uproar throughout the land, and the people who believed began to be very sorrowful, lest by any means those things which had been spoken might not come to pass. But behold, they did watch steadfastly. And that's what you and me are doing. If you're watching this channel, uh, surely you realize that this is mostly a second coming channel. And we're trying to watch for the signs of the times. We're trying to study about it. We're also watching the news, uh, both in nature, society, politics, space, like everything. Uh, Israel, Jerusalem. Okay, so... But behold, they did watch steadfastly. Uh, so that's what the righteous were doing. They were watching steadfastly for that day and that night and that day, which should be as one day as if there were no night, that they might know that their faith had not been in vain. Now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers that all those who, um, who believed in those traditions should be put to death except the sign should come to pass which had been given by Samuel the prophet. Now, I must say, I hope that that's not a parallel <laughs> to our time. Uh, well, I, I guess I guess it doesn't matter because in this story, everything turns out okay, but uh, that would still suck. Uh, anyway, brothers and sisters, can we even begin to understand what it might have been like to await the sign of his coming and also face the dire deadline of death? Would you and I stand firm and steadfast in the faith, or would we waver and shrink? That that's a key question. That is a key question. It, it's a it's a very like wheat and tares question. It's a very um well, I think that's probably the best way of putting it. Wheat wheat and tares, because in the church there are people that are tares. They're not real. Uh they are doing church for some other reason. It could be for social reasons. It could be because of uh, getting married and they feel like, you know, they had a plan to, oh yeah, I'll join your church and I'll marry you. And yeah, yeah. Um, or, or it could be any number of things, but there are people in the church, unbelievably, uh, unbelievably that really aren't members of the church or, um, or, you know, or, or it could be that there maybe some are, not necessarily faking it, but they're they're all they're no, they haven't grown their testimony. They haven't done the necessary work to um, have a strong testimony, keep their covenants, so on and so forth. So uh, this is important, and of course he's asking this. I, I think in the context of the second coming. Uh, back then, would we have stood firm and steadfast? Or, are we doing that now as we're waiting for the second coming to happen? Okay, continuing. Then indeed, the sign of Christ's birth foretold by Samuel was given. In a climate of religious persecution, which you could say that that's kind of happening right now. There's a lot of religious persecution, uh, especially in the realm of politics and social issues. In a climate of religious persecution, and at the tender age of approximately 15, you marveled one evening as the sun went down, but there was no darkness. And the people began to be astonished because there was no darkness when the night came. And they began to know that the Son of God must shortly appear. Yea, all the people were so exceedingly astonished that they fell to the earth. And it came to pass that there was no darkness in all that night, but it was it was as light as though it was midday. And it came to pass that the sun did rise in the morning again, and they knew that it was day that the Lord it was the day that the Lord should be born because of the sign which had been given. And it came to pass, yea, all things, every wit according to the words of the prophets. And it came to pass also that a new star did appear according to the word. Uh, end quote. The day Jesus was born was a day of deliverance for the believers in the new in the new world. Light as the sign of the Savior's birth literally saved their lives. Which is interesting because I never thought about that symbolism. 
I, I, I never had. So I like that he points it out. The Savior's death and resurrection. Now, brothers and sisters, imagine that over 30 years have passed and you are now approaching the age of 50. Uh, that's just like me in real life. Uh, you can still remember vividly the teachings of Samuel in your experiences as a teenager when the sign of the Lord's birth was given. One of the signs of Christ's death foretold by Samuel was three days of intense darkness. Um, now, see, now, if, if, if this story, like, perfectly par parallels us, at least in terms of timing, you know, 2020 would have been the year of um, the parallel, the corresponding year to Christ's birth right? Um, of course, that's not the same now because he's resurrected, but maybe something incredible happened in 2020. Maybe, maybe it was just simply the general conference where we did the Hosanna shout, right? And then maybe it's 30 years later. Now, I, I don't tend to think that. I think that it's probably going to happen within five to 10 years, um, but I'm not closed off to the possibility. Maybe it's more like uh, 30 years from now, you know, 30, 30 years from 2020. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But anyway, that, that's just like something to think about. Uh, you can still remember vividly the teachings of Samuel in your experiences as a teenager when the sign of the Lord's birth was given. Uh, one of the signs of Christ's death foretold by Samuel was three days of intense darkness. And it came to pass there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, insomuch that the inhabitants thereof who had not fallen could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could no there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire kindled, so that there could not be any light at all. And just as a side note, I would really like to know what the phenomena was that was happening there to where you couldn't even uh have light from a candle like what was there something actually in the air anyway um, and there was not any light seen neither fire nor glimmer neither the sun nor the moon nor the stars for so great were the mists of darkness which were upon the face of the land and it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days that there were no there was no light seen and then he says what might it have been like to experience those three days of indescribable darkness and then a short time later gather with the multitude of 2500 people at the temple in the land of bountiful can you envision the majesty of the moment as the savior descended from the heavens and declared behold i am jesus christ i am the light and the life of the world and that's where i'm going to end because you know, again, even all the way up till now, he's telling us to imagine what it would be like. And with this part of the story, this is the part that is more like uh, what what it would actually be like when Christ um, comes in his final uh, second coming appearance. And, and well, I'm not sure about the Jews because I don't know if he just like shows up on Mount Olivet or if he descends from the sky and then no yeah i think he i think he i think he does whatever the case um he's asking us to imagine a situation similar to what we might experience or at least what the world will experience when he comes down uh during the second coming now the righteous uh should be translated and actually come down with him so maybe we'll be um, I guess, experiencing it from a different point of view. Uh, but still, you get the idea. So it's it's all very it's all very interesting. Um, I think this is just one way to kind of prepare our minds um, to imagine the second coming and realize that the second coming really is near. Uh, we know that the Book of Mormon, is, th this story, you know, about Christ coming, it, it is, in fact, a parallel and a foreshadowing of the second coming. So really, this story right here, uh, this talk, it, it really is about the second coming. It's about a story that's about, that's a foreshadowing of the second coming. So, 
All right, so that's going to be it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Again, if you would like your mission photos to be featured on the channel, uh, just send it to me in an email. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Make sure to share it with anyone that might find this interesting. And I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>